I'm a fashion contest here. Thank God. That's why they got me doing it. All right, so we're ready when you are. 20 years ago, um, I had the opportunity to go to Scotland because the clan patriarch, Charlie, had passed away. And I was there to see him off. I, I had really good memories of my granduncle Charlie. He was a sad man uh, with very lonely eyes. And, you know, had kind of a wit about him and played practical jokes usually at my expense. But um, what I really remember, I was just captured by uh, this, this young boy in summer afternoons in Jersey Island. Um, that, uh, that we would go crabbing. Uh, we, we would fill buckets with those monsters. Uh, my, my young imagination was, was ignited by seeing them all clamor over one another to attempt for a hasty escape as somebody had told me what was next. So, uh, despite my hardship and later on having to move in with my parents, uh, what a fucking nightmare that was, um, I uh, brought I went with nay but the clothes on my back and, uh, and a suit I had borrowed from kind of a junior fellow. So uh, I won't bore you with the details of the trip. Um, in truth, I was drunk and asleep for most of it. Um, but uh, what I do remember when I woke the next morning um, in this kind of chilly, damp hell, I found that I had two goals. My first goal was to um, to lay low, to not be underfoot or useful, really, in any way. And while I drifted about the room, um, I wanted to prove a moving target for my mother. I mean, look, in my condition, the hair of the dog and all, um, the last thing I really needed was uh, a tongue lashing, or worse yet, that forlorn look of disapproval. So, I was, it was sort of conspicuous that I didn't actually see anybody that I knew here. Um, when I looked it out on the strange faces, but then I realized it had been like a decade since I'd seen any of these people. Um, they wouldn't have recognized me with my long hair and beard, the bohemian I was in the 90s. And um, so, uh, and then promptly forgot it, as we all the men were, we just do it, testicles do the bar. And we sort of talked and, and drank more, and we ate and told stories about Charlie and how his life had touched us. I had actually stood in front and recalled to a room full of men thrice my age uh, the, the times I had, and this man, and crabs, and the adventures we had, and, and how back in the ceremony I, I looked into the face of this man who had been so kind to me. And honestly, I, I didn't see any of him in that corpse. And, and while it saddened me, somehow I, I found some hope in it. So, after getting lost in their old sodding village, twice, we managed to find our way back to the, uh, to the, the feast where I was reunited with my mother. I mean, everybody was snookered enough. She couldn't very well judge me, right? So uh, I sidled up to her familiar birth, and I, uh, I said, Mom, where is Uncle Charlie's kin? I mean, surely, you know, I'm here, for God's sake. It didn't mean more to me than, than his own children. And, she, she sort of looked at it. She gave me this queer glance and waited long enough for me to wonder if she was kind of trying to figure out a way to, you know, uh, quietly cajole her underage son for, uh, for making the brilliantly original move of becoming another family drunk. Um, and she, her, her expression changed. No, no, no. It, it ran the gamut. It went from, like, confused to understanding to... Oh, Donnie, your Uncle Charlie is not dead. It took me a while to register the words that were kind of coming out of her mouth. I mean, it, it, well, as I did, she sort of turned me around and pointed me at the buffet, the buffet. She said, it's right over there. And this is his father's funeral, and his name is Charlie also. So I looked over, and, uh, and there uh, was one of the same, very same men that I had told stories. <laughs> <laughs> Stuffing a 
as much pate into his gullet as he possibly could. Thank you.